Hello again, this is McKay with BYU Software Training, and in this video I'll be showing you how to generate and format your table of contents in Word. Before we begin, you should have already formatted all of your headings in your document using styles. If you have not already done that, please check out the two videos before this one. I'll link them in the playlist and the description. If your headings are already formatted as styles, then you're good to go. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure you have a blank page where you can insert your table of contents. This should go after your acknowledgments and or abstract, but before your actual thesis begins. If you don't already have a blank page, you can easily insert one by hitting Control enter at the end of a page. You should also make sure that you have a heading on this page for your table of contents that's been formatted as a heading one, and it should just be labeled simply table of contents. Again, if you're not sure what this means, make sure to check out the video on heading ones and twos in this playlist. Next, we'll come over here to the references tab and click on this table of contents button on the far left. In my experience, it's easiest to work with automatic table one, so that's the one we'll insert. Go ahead and click on that. As you can see, an automatic table of contents has been generated based on our headings. It's looking pretty good, but not perfect. There are a number of things we'll want to fix before we can move forward. The first is this blue contents heading that got automatically put in with our table of contents. We're going to want to get rid of this, but there's an issue that often comes up when doing so. Highlight this header and the space after it and delete them both. You'll notice that when you do, it bumps the first line of your table of contents and makes it blue and changes the font. You can change this back to its original formatting by clicking the Update Table option at the top and then choosing Update Entire Table. That gets rid of the bad header and fixes the first line of your table of contents. Next, we'll want to replace this part of our table of contents where our literal title is and instead replace it with TITLE in all caps. You'll just do this manually with your keyboard. We'll now want to move on to fixing the spacing. Just highlight your entire table of contents, click on the Home tab, and click on this button in the Paragraph section to adjust your spacing, and then make sure your whole table of contents is double-spaced. And while you're at it, it'll be worth your time just to make sure that your font is still 12 point in Times New Roman or whatever font you originally chose. Finally, depending on how strict your department is with indentation, you may need to fix that as well. For example, oftentimes you'll want your heading 3's indented further to the right than the default settings do for you. To fix any indentation, you'll first want to bring up the ruler by clicking on the View tab and then clicking on the checkbox next to Show Ruler. Next, click your cursor on the very left of any heading that needs fixing. You'll notice that you have these little hourglass shaped arrows in the top ruler that indicate where indentation happens. To adjust any indentation, simply click and drag this top arrow either left or right. Fixing the indentation for one heading should fix it for all other headings in your table of contents. And there you have it. Your table of contents is done. If you ever need to make edits in your document and want the page numbers in your table of contents to reflect the changes you've made, you can always update your table of contents by right-clicking inside of it, choosing Update Field, and then selecting either Update Entire Table for extensive changes, or choosing Update Page Numbers Only if you just need the page numbers fixed. And that's it. We can now move on to formatting our list of tables and table of figures.